So besides your leadership, what 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 else is working here in, in the <laughs> <Obviously>. financial? <laughs> Obviously. It's all you. The deals have felt a little slow. Are restructurings, bankruptcies piling up? Is that what it is? No, these results actually reflected a variety of things, but especially strength in Europe, where we outperformed the market. The market overall uh, year to date in Europe was down. We, we've been significantly up. And I think it just reflects uh, being in the right place at the right time with the right bankers. So um, that's what we're aiming to continue. What does it look like from here, especially in Europe, where there's some serious growth worries? There are definitely serious growth worries. And last time I was on with you, I was concerned about the, the pace of ECB tightening. I remain concerned about that with the move today. Um, I think the European growth outlook is quite challenged. And uh, a lot of that has to do with energy prices, for which there are, you know, we're, we may have additional shocks coming, not with regard to natural gas prices in uh, Europe, but with regard to oil prices, because as you know, there is a significant additional set of restrictions coming at the beginning of December. And without the so-called price cap idea that the administration here has put forward, you could see significant additional um, uh, movement on oil prices in that case. But back to your point, yes, I, the outlook for Europe right now is somewhat challenged. There's no, there's no way to kind of sugarcoat that. No, I remember last time you were on, you were saying that the ECB you thought was making a big mistake, and and it did another one today. And I still the do. Jumbo size rate <laughs> I still hike. do. So, so you still do. And What's, honestly, what, the same thing for the yeah, the same thing for the Fed. I think again, the central banks that are uh, the leading central banks now have the conviction of the converted. They are probably overdoing things. They're going to. It seems like they're going to continue tightening until they see actual uh, inflation in the rate in range that they want. The problem with that is, as we know, monetary policy has a really long lead time. So there is a ton of tightening um, that's already in the pipeline that will be hitting the economy in 2023. And there's a real risk of overdoing things. Um, and that's all the more so because, at least for the United States, the dollar strengthening is also going to have a cooling effect. A lot of what happened in the GDP report this morning was very strong net exports. Uh, that's a temporary phenomenon because normally what you'd expect is as the dollar appreciates, that will start to flip in the other direction. So we've got all these things kind of in the pipeline that are making the outlook for 2023 more challenging. And the central banks, both the Fed and the ECB, are sort of ignoring that and just saying, well, we don't see inflation coming down enough yet, so let's just keep tightening. So what, what then will mistake. be the result? You, you, think, you think we're headed for... What, a, deep, a deeper recession than consensus expects in the U.S. next year? Well, in Europe, I think what's going to ha happen is the ECB is likely going to have to reverse its monetary policy at some point uh, next year as the economic uh, situation there deteriorates in the face of ongoing high energy prices. Uh, in the United States, it's a little bit less clear. Uh, again, the, the report out this morning showed some strength, but a lot of that came from net exports. We should also note the report also, there had been this debate earlier this year about whether we were in recession. The United States is not right. currently in recession. We we're talking growth. about whether there will be one. Right. <laughs> there will, whether there will be one. And, uh, you know, I think, as I said last time I was on with you, if the Fed wants to create a recession, it can. And so we are on a path where with continued tightening, that is very likely where we're going to wind up. The, the question becomes whether there is an alternative path where we just kind of wait and see what the impact of the tightening that's already, again, in the pipeline that hasn't yet hit the economy. You saw residential inv investment and also non-residential investment decline materially in the numbers out this morning also. There is a lot more of that to come. Um, the alternative approach here is there's been a lot of tightening done. We can kind of wait and see uh, how it plays out. And then the Fed and the ECB can always do more if things turn out to look really great next year. I don't think that's the most likely scenario.